Welcome back to the video lecture series for Introduction to the Art of Programming Using Scala. In this video, we begin a new chapter. We're going to talk about the actor model of parallelism. So, actors are um, an alternate approach that we can use for creating parallelism in our programs. They aren't fundamentally functional. They allow us to have mu mutation, but if you adhere to the actor model strictly, you wind up not having any race conditions. And so, I want to go through and show you how uh, that can happen. We're going to talk about the actor model kind of in a general sense, and then we'll look at some aspects of the Scala library for doing actors. So first off, let's start with, um, this is what's called a sequence diagram. And uh, we have our main object that we created, and it has its, its main method. And the way you read these diagrams is that as you move down, this is time, and then we have different objects that we're calling things on. And the problem that we normally had with parallelism was that each of these objects contains its own mutable state. And the way that the actor model works is whoops. Shorten that up. Okay, there we go. Well so this is the way that normal calls work. Okay, so a normal method call is your main method invokes a method on this object, it does whatever work it's going to do, and then it returns. And it's even possible for it's possible for this method to have inside of it an invocation over here to this method or to a method on this other object. There we go. Okay, so, so the main method calls a method on this object, which calls a method over on this object, which returns there, and then this returns. And these methods here can wind up mutating values that are, that are in the object. And so method calls what happens to if you follow a thread through here, this main thread basically follows the route through these things, comes back here and then runs through and then it would call some other methods and, and whatnot. Um, where things get interesting is as soon as we throw in another thread. So we have a, a second thread that's involved here. And this is going to be weird because I'm kind of drawing my uh, diagram backward. Not certain how that will, uh, how this tool will, will like that. So what you can picture is happening. Oh, that was interesting. Um, here. Okay, and let's grab this and pull it down to here. So this second thread could make a call to object two, while the main thread is also making a call to object two. And during this time in here, this is where we can have our race conditions. Okay, this is the time where I have two threads of control that are both overlapping on, um, on the same period of time in this given object. Okay, that This right here is the whole source of our race conditions. And it happens because the threads of control, when we do method invocations, go running through and they move from one object to another. So this thread is, is in you know, whatever object is over here, and then its control moves over to here, and then it returns back. The approach of the actor model is instead of having all of these... Um, having it so that all of, so one thread jumps through and goes to all the objects, effectively every object, in this case every actor, has its own thread of control. And the calls that you make are generally asynchronous. If we draw these in an SQL, dot, or in the uh, UML diagram here, they look something like this, and there normally is no return. 
Okay? But this invoke here, when you're doing this with actors, it's not calling a method, it's sending a message. And the key difference here is that the thread in for this actor continues running on its own, and then this actor would have its own thread of control, and this actor has its own thread of control. So instead of this being an invoke, we'd say that this is sending a message, and that's causing something to happen over here. Okay. That's the general idea of, of the actor model. Now, why is this uh, superior? Why does this prevent us from having race conditions? Well, because as long as we keep all of our mutable memory locked away inside of a single actor, the only thing that can touch it is the thread for that actor. If this object, uh, this actor wants information about this actor, it can request that information, and then it can send a, a message uh, back. But it cannot, the thread that's over here cannot alter the data that's over here, and nor can this one alter the data that's over here. So basically the, the mutable data that you have is kept safe inside of each one of these actors. So that's the general idea of, of the actor model. And the more actors that, that we have, the more we're potentially spreading uh, around the work and, and allowing things to happen in parallel. So we'll come back in the next video and we'll start talking about the kind of the syntax of how you send messages, how actors work, and look at the original library for this. In